folks, welcome back to another episode of Bigfoot BS with Sam Deloach and Bill Lancaster. This is episode 9, and today we're going to talk about uh, how to cast a print while out in the wild. So walking, while we're walking along here in the woods, uh, Bill and I have come across uh, just a normal dog track, but we want to show uh, the proper way of, of casting a, a print while you're out in the wild. So I'm going to get over here and get ready, get some things out and show you exactly what I take with me while I'm out researching. Now, one of the things that you should always have with you, of course, while you're out hiking or anything, of course, is water. Because this print right here is not near a water source. So, you're going to have to mix up your, uh, your casting material with water. So, I always suggest to take some kind of uh, extra water with you, whether it be in a water bottle or a canteen, or what you might have. Uh, the other thing that I also bring is a is a Ziploc baggie that has an empty container in it with a container of my casting material. And in this case, what I have in here is just your regular plaster of Paris for this demonstration. And what I'm going to do is actually take the water, of course, and mix it into the, the plaster, which I'm going to show you, and we'll cast this this uh, dog print here. Now, when we came across it, I actually said to Bill, that's a rather large uh, canine print, and it is. It's a, it's a big one. But you can see the definition of the heel pad there very well, the toe pads, and you can actually see the claw mark. So you can see the actual claw marks very well on each of the end of the toe pads there. So what I would like to do is actually do a, a simple demonstration on, on how to cast this while you're out in the wild. Um, because, of course, this is going to be a very small version of what you would want to find, uh, which is a big footprint. But, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually take this casting material, and I'm going to take a little stick and some water, and I'm just going to to go ahead and mix all this up. Let me get some weeds out of here right quick. Let's go ahead and I've got plenty of bottles of water by the way with me. So. This is plaster of Paris um, and typically whenever I cast I try to use creek water but this is just plaster of Paris that I have uh, bought at Lowe's and it uh, it's like eight dollars a box and you don't need much uh, plaster to to actually cast a print. Now this is going to be way more than we need but, um, and there's really no way of, uh, of trying to, to get this. You want the consistency of pancake batter. So you just kind of keep mixing it up and you'll, you'll see you'll start getting uh, pa pancake batter. And if you happen to actually put a little too much water, uh, don't be afraid to go ahead and add a little more, or uh, a little more of the uh, plaster of Paris. But like I say, I've got plenty of, uh, plenty of casting material here for what we're going to do. I typically make my cast a little bit different than other folks. I like to make a form for mine. And the reason that I like to do that is to show a lot of the definition that might be outside of the print uh, that, you know, that we might be able to, uh, to help us uh, find a description of, of, of it. So let me get this mixed up here. Okay, I'm going to set that to the side. Still have some here coming, coming around. Might even need, I might have put a little too much water in there, so I might need to add some. And this right here, folks, is it doesn't hurt the environment. It will not hurt the environment. It's uh, non-toxic. Um, a lot of, this can be used in a lot of arts and crafts projects, like I said. I picked this up at the local Lowe's um, home improvement store. You can get it at Walmart, uh, Home Depot, basic, or Hobby Lobby. Any, any of those stores will sell this. I know that Lowe's actually sells it in the uh, bigger bags, the 20-pound bags, which a lot of times I like to actually buy. And I'm going to add a little more to this there, Bill, before we actually... It's looking very good. It's just a little too what I call soupy for me. So let me put a little... Well, yeah, it's looking. It's actually looking okay. A little 
clumpy, but I'm trying to get the few clumps out. But this is basically the consistency, the consistency that you want to have right here. And it'll look about like pancake batter, like you're going to make some pancakes in the morning for breakfast. Okay, so let's just let that sit for a minute. I actually like that. That looks good. And I'm going to get another water to clean my hands. Because the next step that I want to do is make my form. And I have, most of the time I have bigger, bigger uh, types of um, little bowls that I use for different sizes. Let me get my knife out and cut this right quick. We didn't know what type of print we were going to come across today. So I didn't have this pre-cut, which I should have. It won't take me a second to get it cut. Okay, so there's my little form that I have there. I'm going to place it right over, right over the print. Now what we're going to do, let me mix it a little one more time. I always like to let it sit for a few minutes and get the uh, most of the air bubbles out. They'll come up to the top. And now what I'm going to do, I love this. This is a great mixture here, actually. I'm glad I did not add any more. This is perfect consistency. And I'm going to go ahead and lightly pour this. Now, I always try to go for the, the, the uh, pads first because that's, of course, the deepest part of the print. I think that's really good. We got way too much, made way too much. And then I always like to try to smooth it out to kind of get the air bubbles out. We really didn't need a form on this one, guys. But if we did, if we needed to show definition, I would actually have set it down in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit. And it'll take about 30 minutes or so uh, to 45 minutes to set up. And we'll show you how we take the print out, throw a little water on it, at least get it a little clean till you can get home and actually clean the print up really well to see if you might have any dermal ridges in it or any other type of definition or hairs that might be with, uh, within that cast. So stay tuned and come back. We'll be coming back here in a few minutes. All right, folks, so we have now returned back to the cast. And as you can see here, it is set up. And what we're going to do is, most of the time I have a, a good shovel that I keep with me, uh, but this time I actually don't have it because it's in another backpack that I use for uh, treasure hunting with the metal detector, so it's in that one. So I'm going to use my knife today, and it's just a, just a typical long, long knife. And what I'm going to do is actually going to cut around this. So what we want to do is try to bring that print up. Then we'll get off all of the... Uh, all of the substrate that's on it. In this case, it's going to be this red clay. So let's go ahead and this didn't help us much this time, but I just kind of wanted to show you uh, how sometimes that I use that. So like I said, I'm going to go around this and cut it out. So as you can see here, I'm just basically making almost a 45 degree type angle cut. You know, almost as if you were going to plant a bush or something so that you can get it out of there. So here we go. We've got it out. Now what we're going to do is we'll actually turn this over right here. And uh, we'll try to get a lot of this material off of it so that we can look at it. And I'm going to be very careful as to doing this because I want to, uh, I don't want to mess up any of the, um, any of the impressions that we might have caught here. Um, any, any type of ridges that might be on the dog's uh, foot or anything because we just, we don't know. Um, but like I say, in this case, we do know it is a, a dog for sure. But if we didn't know what type of print it was, we want to be very, very careful. Um, 
And what actually comes in handy if you're around a creek is you can actually just lay this in the creek and get a lot of this off. So I'm going to try to get a little more here. I think it looks pretty good, bud. All right, so let's get a little bit more here, and I'm going to try to rinse it off here now a little bit with this with this water. Try to get a lot. It looks like it's coming out very good. Um, this is the Tennessee red clay. Uh, it's not in a lot of our parts of the United States, but where we live here in East Tennessee, it is everywhere. So it is, it's coming out pretty good, folks. Coming out really, really good, actually. And we may have to actually take this down here, see where the toes are starting to come through here. See the toes? Right there, see the... Yeah, so let me go ahead and show everybody this. So we have the all the toes here, and there's the back pad, and there is the actual uh, claw. And um, so I'm going to actually put this in a bag, and we will go down here to the creek and actually put it under the creek and get get a little more definition so that you guys can see it. But this is the basic way of actually casting a print while you're out in the woods. Stay tuned for uh, for us to get down here to the creek, and we'll get it cleaned up and show you the result. Hey folks, we're back again here on episode 9, and what I've done, I've come down to the creek here, and as you can see, there's pine needles and sticks and, and uh, all that in there, but um, I'm almost done cleaning here. Give me about 10 more seconds. I just want to try to get a little more off, but yeah, once you have your print casted, you'll want to try to find a water source very quick, uh, preferably a flowing creek like this and you know you can just rinse it off but as you can see from far away the definition is there um, so let's get this up close here to the camera so what we've got here is a rather big dog or a coyote and this is very very big we have uh, max with us today which is a very big dog and his print was about that big so you see how big this is and you can see the definition that this cast pulled out. It pulled out the back pad, all toe pads. Now this did break on me up at the, uh, the original cast site, but you can see here the uh, claw mark, all the definition. Now, whenever I get home, I always bag this up in a Ziploc baggie, and I'll get home and I'll actually take a soft toothbrush and put it down in, in the sink at the house and start getting everything, all of the loose uh, dirt and contaminants off of there um, and then you'll want to just kind of briefly cut away these we know that this is not hair we know that this is pine needles but let's say if that was hair sticking out of there um, for one you don't want to contaminate it um, two you would want to use gloves the whole time that you were that you were touching it but uh, in this case this is a perfect example of a canine print casted in the woods thank you folks and tune in to our last episode which is episode 10, and we'll be having an interview with Mr. Matt Delph and his sighting. Thank you.